Hey, hey, it's the Coach. How are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. This is episode 56. That is 56 in German. Let me know in the comments down below what is episode 57 in your language, boys. And also, finally, we're back again, dudes. EA or Xbox, Xbox, what are you doing? Yesterday, I was planning on doing a double upload, which I hopefully did today. If you guys haven't seen today's first video, please check it out. I love my road to glory, and I hope you guys get involved in it more. Um, I couldn't record anything. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even open up FIFA, and that was the first time I legit thought, okay, I have to get the physical copy because for whatever reason everyone that had the ultimate edition or the champion edition of FIFA 19 wasn't able to get onto the game for 28 hours. Yeah, that's not cool. But boys, good messages coming in right now along with a really really bad one. If you guys are excited about this Crystal Palace career mode episode, please hit that like button. Let's get this video to over 2 thousand likes yes we will do it now look at the fan objectives do you see something it has changed double trouble is achieved yes boys the double trouble has been achieved Jovic and Zaha now have over 40 goals together that means one more objective is going down the drain two of them have been finished four Still to go for the triple man. We need another hat trick. That should be something that we are able to achieve. Mini Mayhem. That is the number one objective that I have to get done. Six out of ten. Four more to go. And I think it's going to be the hardest one. Uh, quadruple. We're looking quite good at the moment. I'm locking it down. Also looking quite decent. Hopefully uh, we can get it done. Now that we have beaten Liverpool in a massive, massive way. <coughs> <laughs> we are only one goal behind them. Hopefully, we can prove that we have the best defense in the league. I gotta admit though, Liverpool's defense is really good, but we completely smashed them in the last episodes. Now, as you can see, we are 13 points ahead of the teams below us, but right now, I don't even care about the points. I really care about that objective, the locking it down one. Hopefully, we can get it done, boys. It's gonna be a tough one for ourselves but i hope we can finish that objective um and also let's take a look into the calendar just to like recap what has been happening lately as you can see right here we have played against millwall we have made it into the semi-finals of the fa cup we played against liverpool smashed them 5-0 arsenal was a 2-1 victory as well and our opponent in the champions league is FC Barcelona. I cannot wait to test this team against Lionel Messi and his teammates. This is going to be a massive game, but we're up against Manchester City in the league first. Now, the good messages you have already heard, the fan objectives and everything. Let's go over to the very, very sad message. Joao Felix, boys, I didn't realize on the last episode, but someone actually pointed it out in the comments down below. Let me quickly go over there and um, give a shout out to the person that has shouted this out. Joao Felix is sadly injured, lads, and it is looking very, very bad. Um, this comment right here from Sam, he says, did you realize that Joao Felix got injured? I spotted it on the training part. He's gone for five weeks and you guys should know there's not much time left. We're already in April. So one, two, three, four, five. He will be back in May, but he's missing a crucial, crucial part of the season. But we are playing against some massive teams. We're playing against Barcelona twice. We're playing against Tottenham twice. We have Manchester City. Joao Felix missing in those games is going to be bad for us. Now, I was thinking, how do I replace Joao Felix in this team? Who do I put into that camp position? I was thinking Andreas Pereira, boys. Because Pereira has that shooting on him. Pereira is quite similar to Joao Felix in many ways. So I think him into that uh, camp position is probably the right thing to do. If it doesn't work out though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pop Zaha into uh, cam and I'm going to bring on Moise Keane into the starting lineup. The reason behind that is Moise Keane has been amazing ever since he has joined into the team. So this is how we will play uh, for the first team. 
And for the reserves team now, they will have to play against Manchester City and who knows how they will be performing. Now, Pereira is obviously a part of the first team now, so I can't play him in this game. Um, I have to find a solution. And that solution might as well be Cavard Lewin. Yeah, boys, Cavard Lewin is back into the team. We are putting Trossard at Cam, Cavard Lewin and Keane up top. Not really the best partnership. We we obviously sold Cavard Lewin already. As soon as the next transfer window opens, he is gone. But yeah, this is going to be interesting against Manchester City. Let's just hope that we don't concede a goal. That is the most important thing. Also, here's another comment from Murat. He says, Crystal Palace board says, mate, we're not on track. Johnny says, yeah, nothing that concerns us. Now, here's the thing. I found that very sad, you know. I, I thought, or I think personally, it should be much more important of what the board believes of you. If they believe in you, if, you're, if they're happy with you, I think the objective should have much more of an impact onto your team. But right now, like, the manager rating doesn't do anything. If you have 99 or... 69 it doesn't have a difference you still have the same amount of money you still have the same amount of time to play for your team and nothing really changes at all so i really hope that they will do something with the manager rating because right now it only matters if you go below 50 anything above 50 it doesn't matter because your job is safe so if you get below 50 that's the time where you need to like do something for the objectives but right now dude there is actually nothing to do uh, I really think that they should overwork this whole manager rating system because it's just cosmetic at this point. It doesn't really do anything for ourselves. Also, today is my mom's birthday. I have to go into the city and pick up some uh, gifts today. Dude, it's the hardest thing buying something for my mom because she basically has everything and it's so hard to like figure out something that she needs. Over the past few years, I have been very successful in finding gifts. This year, I do not believe in myself. Talking about believing in myself, Liverpool have beaten... Liv uh, not <laughs> Liverpool have beaten Liverpool. They have beaten Porto yesterday at home 2-0. A lot of people were thinking that Liverpool would just smash Porto as they have done the last time. I didn't believe in it. Porto is a really good team. We did really well to keep a clean sheet. Alisson came up with some good saves and the defense was kind of on point. I think we could have easily conceded one because our um, some defenders were not really on point. Trent Alexander-Arnold, I felt like, wasn't really playing that well defensively, was giving the ball away quite often and seemed out of position quite often as well. So hopefully... He will improve his performances in the upcoming games. But it is a very good position for Liverpool to be in. I'm really confident um, looking into the future, looking into the second leg. Because I do believe that Liverpool always has the chance to score an away goal. And if we do score an away goal, it's going to be very hard for Porto to somehow get into the next round. Now, talking about the comments, um, here is another one that says, um, which match are you going to watch after the Liverpool game? I am very excited about Barcelona against Manchester United um, because I think Manchester United on a good day can play some really, really good football and, of course, Lionel Messi. I can't wait to see what Lionel Messi does to the Barca, the, uh, to the Manchester United defense. I'm really excited about that one. So it's going to be a very interesting game for me to watch and I'm definitely going to be tuning in into the Barca match and also maybe even Juventus against Ajax um, because I want to see if Ajax can cause another upset. I think it would be the dream for so many people to somehow see Ajax win the Champions League and if Liverpool drop out of the Champions League, I wish either for Barca against Juve, for Messi against Ronaldo in the Champions League final, or for Ajax to just win it all. I would love to see that. But hey, there's a long time to go. Let's see what Juventus can do against Ronaldo and his boys. It's going to be quite interesting. But this is what we can do. We can see the goal against Manchester City. 1-0 Leroy Sané. That's an absolute disgrace of a start into the episode. I will blame Xbox. Because you know why? If I had played FIFA yesterday, I wouldn't be so bad right now. I'd be warmed up going into this, but I couldn't play FIFA for 28 hours, and I'm definitely going to blame it on that. Moise Keane, ah, doesn't get the shot off. And also Moise Keane, the guy is on top form, isn't he? He is doing bits for Juventus right now. I, I think he scored the winning goal against AC Milan as well. 
he seems like a really good talent, man. I'm happy to see him succeed so well because of all the racist abuse that he has been getting. So it's really nice to see him respond in a very, very good way on the pitch, you know. Moise Keen gets in there now. He has defenders around him. The only thing that I don't like about him on FIFA is his agility and the fact that he only has three-star skill moves. I hope he, he skills a little bit more in the future so he can get to four-star. And I've conceded another one. First of all, we are about to lose this game, which I understand. But it's looking very, very bad for the locking it down objective. We are conceding way too many goals. The only thing I can really hope for at this stage is that Liverpool is conceding a lot of them as well. It's 2-0, 20 minutes into the game. I could potentially get massively smashed right here. We don't want that to happen. Moise Keane got that pass from Milivojevic. Yes, does that count as his assist? Please, 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 please. Maurice Keane makes it 2-1. The comeback is on. Please let that count. That has to be Milivojevic assist, right? No one touched the ball. I don't think anyone touched the ball. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Okay, three more. Three more. Hey, even if I lose this game, as long as I get something out of it in terms of the objectives, I'm okay with it. Milivojevic, let's go, dude. Great job. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't pass it. No, Kevin De Bruyne. Connor Morgan, big save. Raheem Sterling, they get a corner from this one. Connor Morgan, that was a big one, mate. And here we go down the middle with Milivojevic. Milivojevic looking for that killer pass. He finds Nandez. Nandez will stop. Bring it back to Trossard. Trossard, yes, let's go. 2-2. Two, two. We will take that, boys. Back into the game. Manchester City thought they were running away with it. Nope. It is 2-2. Two, two. Trossard in that camp position might be a really good spot for himself. Nandez does well to see him and pass it into him with his right foot, which is his weak foot in that position. I do believe though Nandez has a four-star weak foot. Trossard with seven goals in the Premier League this season. A lot of goals in other competitions as well, so I'm very, very happy that we brought him into the team. He has been a great asset, especially in simulations. Oh no, Mital, get in there. Cover Gabriel, cover De Bruyne. There we go. Good defending. Let's go. Good defending there, man. That could have easily been 3-2. Moise, big steal. That number 10 suits him very well, in my opinion. Oh, God. Milivojevic chasing down Leroy Sane. That's not looking good, is it? Oh, no. Gabriel. Oh, my God. Oh, what? That has to be one of the most aesthetic goals I have conceded on FIFA 19. Just look at that beauty. Look at this. Dude. That first touch is ridiculous. Look at that. Okay, the ball goes into his body and then somehow teleports in front of him. Well, I do not think anymore that this goal was beautiful. It was a glitch. Gabriel, you don't deserve to score right there. Now, we are chasing our opponents once again in terms of the scoreline. Kevin Lewin, as always, terrible. Awful. God awful, man. This guy is so bad on this game. Come on, finish this at least. No, of course he won't. Of course he won't. Ah, I can't get to the ball and that's going to be it. I can feel it already, man. We won't have another chance, are we? Oh, actually, hold on a sec. We might. We might just get one more chance. Ah, Cavalloon. I bottled it, boys. We have lost. And we conceded three goals. That is so bad. Yes, we did something for Milivojevic's objective, but... That is a terrible result. That's an awful, awful result. Not happy with that at all. Only three shots on target, man. That doesn't look good. That's a really bad look. In terms of the locking it down objective, that really hurt us, man. I gotta check it out real quick. And the player of the month isn't even Jovic. Lots of bad things happening at the same time. Look at this. We have conceded 31 goals. Liverpool is on 28. Three goals behind, man. And not many games to go. Seven games left. That's not good. Also, guys, I just wanted to announce one more thing. I will be starting to do more one-off videos. I am planning on getting a lot more new content under the channel so that you guys understand 
there will be some experiment type of videos in the future if you guys have any ideas let me know in the comments down below if there is actually a really good idea i might make a series of it so go ahead leave your comments down below with some ideas for experiment videos stuff that you would like to see i would be very interested in going ahead and giving you guys some new content hopefully um it is something that you are looking forward to now now it's time against barcelona we have to step in into the Champions League with uh, Eder Militao as the only player that is a bit tired because Manolas is still injured as you guys know. Um, this is going to be a rough game. After that game against Manchester City, the confidence is really low, the morale is really low. I don't know how we will perform but most importantly at home we can't allow Barcelona to score away goals. That is going to be the key to this battle against Barcelona and Messi. I can't wait to test my team though. I'm very interested to see how the first team does against the likes of these players. Let's jump in there and let's see what happens. Hopefully it will be us coming out on top. So Bayern Munich is still in it against Liverpool. Olympique Lyon is getting beaten by Leverkusen and Juventus has beaten Chelsea 2-0 so far. Now though, it is time for this team to step up. I don't see Messi. Hello, where's Lionel? I see Luke Shaw, but I don't see Messi. Hello, is he the captain? He should be the captain, right? Trent, oh, okay. And is he on the pitch? Where's Messi? He's not even on the pitch. What the hell? Hold on a second, we're gonna check the, the bench of um, our opponents. Why can I not see the bench? We don't know if Messi is here, boys. We have no idea. Hold on, I have an idea. We're gonna do this, right? We're gonna play the ball over here. We're gonna stand right in front of the bench of Barcelona. And we're gonna take a deeper look into the players that are on the bench. This is 200 IQ, be honest. This is, right? We're gonna go over to our left back right here and we're gonna check out if we can see Messi on the bench. Is he there? Is that Messi back there? I think that is, right? Yeah, that is Messi sitting by himself at the back side. He's just chilling. He's like, I don't even wanna chill with these dudes. He's just back there, dudes. And he's not having fun. You see him? He isn't playing in the Champions League. This coach must be mad. It's a good passing play to start off this game. Tsigankov, go on. Tsigankov, that's what you get for not playing the best player in the world. There we go, boys. It's 1-0. Tsigankov blasts it past the keeper. And there were a lot of comments saying Tsigankov isn't really playing that well. You need to replace him and all of that stuff. But I still believed in him and he gets it done for ourselves in the first couple of minutes. Andreas Pereira, the replacement for Joao Felix, also manages to get himself an assist right there. That is a very good way to prove that you were the right choice in that position. Great goal by Tsigankov. 1-0 up because Messi isn't playing. Barcelona with two Englishmen down their wings, which is quite interesting to see. Luke Shaw and Trent playing together at Barcelona, imagine. Here we go though, we have Tierney on the attack. Tierney plays it through into Shoya, Shoya. He gets past the defender, he gets past him once. Can he do it again? Shoya Nakajima gets, gets fouled by his own player, Jovic. Jovic, can you move out of the way, dude? That was such a good attack. And here is the top scorer of our team, getting past players and playing the right passes. Jovic, go on then, play it through, Andreas Pereira. Shoya at the far side, that's gonna be it, that's gonna be 2-0, Shoya nearly smashed that above the crossbar, why is he shooting so hard, we'll take it, it's 2-0, an amazing counter attack against Barcelona who are now throwing everything forward and you can see what it has cost them, this was not expected at all beautiful play and once again Andreas Pereira gets himself another assist look at that shot from Shoya why are you putting so much power behind it dude you need to calm down but Nakajima and also Tigankov both of our wingers with the goal that shows you these guys are still doing bits go on then Jovic passes it Shoya left foot uh, unlucky the defense is this time paying some sort of attention I would say but it is quite surprising for us to see Barcelona struggle this much. And um, I really didn't expect my team to destroy them the way that we have been. 
within these first 20 minutes. Go on then. Oh my god, Jovic, that was beautiful. Beautifully played. Toliso gets it away though for them. We're going to cross it in towards Militao. Militao right there. Jumps up. Gets to it. Go on, Militao once again. Hey, my dude is actually even beating the goalkeeper in the air. Barcelona still looking for at least one goal in this first half as we go into the last minutes of it. Dembele and the boys are playing it nicely. They do have an option in the middle with Suarez. I'm trying to cover it. It is beautiful play, but we will kick it away with Militao. And that could be the first half done. No, it doesn't seem like it. Barcelona get one more chance. Sanderberg is tackle. Is misplaced and mistimed, but they are playing it around the back too much. And then that Militao will get it away. That is going to be the first half done with the clean sheet and two goals from amazing passing play against Barcelona. I didn't expect this at all, but right now we are the better team. But Barcelona is slowly getting back into the game. I can feel it. Yes, Militao. Yo, Militao is incredible. Like right now, he feels like an amazing player. Ever since Manolas got injured and Militao has made it back into the team or has made it into the starting lineup, I have been impressed by him, man. Maybe Manolas could drop into the second team. I don't even care because Manolas hasn't been that good for me. But Militao is showing me signs of a great defender. Cross is coming in. It's a good cross, actually. But we do defend it. And it's yet another cross or another corner for Barcelona. Coutinho plays it inside. Sergei plays it back. They will be crossing it now, I think. But Militao again, right there in that perfect position to grab the ball and stop the danger. Zaha, can you play through? Of course you can. That wasn't even offside. It was. It was offside. Unlucky, man. I thought we were through. And despite my dog not being in this room, I can smell his fart. Like, that's how intense his farts have been these past two days. I don't know what he has eaten outside. Because he, he gets regular food from us. Which doesn't really make his fight stink that much. But right now, I don't know. While we were out walking around, he has eaten something yesterday. And now he's letting it out. It's the worst smell. It's coming through two rooms at least. There's two rooms between me and him. And he's still farting and I can still smell it. Yikes, come on, Van Bissaka. No, not like that, man. Not like that. Oh, it is a foul or offside. Whatever it is, I will take it. It is still 2-0. Very nice. Beautifully played. Let's go. Woo, Zaha. Nice stuff. Go on, then. Go on, Pereira. Oh, he's through. Smash it. Ah, oh, it was green timed. It was green timed. How does that turn out that way? Barcelona, 77 minutes into the game, 2-0 down, and still no Messi. I cannot believe that. Coutinho wins a header against Van Bissaka. Bissaka has been beating everyone in the air, and all of a sudden, look at his positioning. What is? Why is he purposely going behind Coutinho? Look at him. What is that? That should not be happening, man. It's 2-1. Barcelona do score an away goal, which puts them into a really good position. Now they only have to win 1-0 at home, and they will be through. That's not good. Hold on, though. They are struggling here to get the ball away. That should be mine with Militao. It isn't. Bamin gets it. Pereira. Good ball. Jovic. Sanda. Zaha. Go on. That's a goal. Oh no, I hit the post, and I believe it was offside. It could have been 3-1. No, it's actually counting. That could have been 3-1, boys. I bottled it with the last attack of the game. Could have gotten an even better advantage and forced Barcelona to score two goals at home. But no, it is only a 2-1 win. I mean, yes, the players are celebrating, but I am being a little cautious, knowing that Messi wasn't on the pitch, maybe next time he will be playing against us. But apart from that, the second half, the game was completely dominated by Barcelona. I didn't really get that many chances. I think that they had 58% possession. You can tell the better team has lost this game. I'm very happy that that happened, but that is not good. In terms of the second leg, those are no good omens.
If that's the right word, Omen, I think that's the right word. Within the last two games, we have conceded four goals. That is just not acceptable, guys. We are not doing well enough at the moment. And um, we will be simming with the reserves team right here against Everton. I know this is quite risky, but I gotta do it. I want the next game that we go ahead and play to be against Barcelona again in the next episode. So hopefully... We can somehow grab a clean sheet out of this game. That would mean a lot. Dodo gets a yellow card quite early into the game. Sigurdsson scores. Bernard scores. That's it, boys. I'm telling you, we're not getting it done. The locking it down objective. It's not happening. Moise Keane gets one back. It's 2-1. <sighs> That's not looking good. Richarlison makes it 3-1. That's really bad, dudes. I don't think I'm going to get it done. I think that's it. I think locking it down is done. Next time, next season, as a forfeit, we will have to buy a lowest, the lowest rated defender in the game and play him for at least 10 games. That doesn't sound good. That sounds god-awful. I am not happy, you know. I'm really not happy with this. In the Premier League right now, if we look into the games, we have conceded 34 goals. Chelsea have only conceded 28. Liverpool conceded 29. There are so many more teams that are better in terms of defending than we are. And that's just not acceptable. I am not okay with that at all. Do I have a game against Chelsea in hand? Let me quickly check. No, that's it. We don't have Chelsea. We don't have Liverpool. I think that's it. That's done, boys. We have no way of getting it that lock it down objective done, in my opinion. It looks very, very bad. I need to start focusing on the Millie Mayhem, on the Triple Man, and the Quadruple. Especially Millie Mayhem has to be the one that we have to get done right now. So far, Millie Vojevic is on seven, which is nice to see. Oh no, wait, what? He's on eight. He's on eight. Yes. Let's go! Two! Two in this episode! I don't even know when that happened. Probably in a simulation, but I don't care. Let's go, Milivojevic gets eight. That's a great way to pump me up. Let's go, man. Two more to go. Only two more. Within two months of football, I should get it done. But saying that, I've struggled with Milivojevic for a long time, so I could still bottle it. There's still many objectives to go after. And in terms of the Premier League league table, I didn't even look at the points. Where are we right now? We have lost a bunch of games lately, and that's not good. 73 points on us. Manchester United is on 66. We are making this league interesting for no reason at all. We need to put some performances in. Once again, next episode, boys. Trust me, I'll be doing my best. Thank you so much for watching this one. Barcelona is up next. Can we beat the Giants and move on into the semi-finals of the Champions League? That's going to be very interesting to see. Have a great day, boys. Love you all. Take care. Player of the episode is... Tsikankov. Peace.